All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to start our journey of, you know, exploring this architecture. So first thing that, you know, I would advise you to do is, you know, just open up Google search and then type um, AR64 programming guide. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention earlier, but we want to do is uh, learn the CPU, you know, as it would be useful for uh, embedded uh, software engineer, right? So the idea is, as uh, you know, you as an embedded software engineer, how should you perceive? What are the mental models that you should have in your head about this CPU so that you can flawlessly work, right? And so one of the ways to do that is to go after the programmer's guide. Right? So we'll first download this document, and then you know. I propose strategies and then starting next video we'll follow those strategies all right okay so once you have typed this uh, go after this document here which is the arm cortex a series programmers guide uh, for arm v8a right so let me then you know quickly go ahead and click that once i click it uh, i would kind of you know land on this page here and on this page you know we pretty much have like all of the programmers guide as a web page available here like a web document but what we are going to do is we are going to click on this download button here and then download a pdf copy now i have already downloaded this so let me go ahead and kind of you know open this up so when i open it i i see like a 296 pages worth of document you know and my suggestion or my claim now is understanding these 296 pages will enable you as a software engineer embedded software engineer to be able to work with these cpus at least reason about them ask clever questions and learn more right so this is the entry point so to speak and not that we'll go through all the 296 pages i'll just introduce how to think about the cpus and then you know you can go ahead and read rest of the document all right so what are we going to you know focus on here how do we go about learning the architecture so let me propose the following right when learning uh, okay let me not write this when learning about any cpu there are certain set of mental models that you need to have that you need to be kind of you know um, uh, aligned with or updated with and so those models are one is called the programmer's model right so programmer's uh, model and this kind of describes what kind of instruction set is available what are the internal registers that the cpu has so essentially an interface or an imagination of what that cpu is that's available in the programmer's model and will kind of you know nudge or hint towards this the other model is called the exception exception model right so this is the model that talks about how exceptions are handled how interrupts are handled right and we'll kind of revisit this in a while so just take it on faith right now that there exists something like so and then there is something called the memory model right so the memory model is then going to talk about how does the cpu talk to the memory subsystem right how does it go and fetch data and so on and so forth and then there is something called the debug model right and the debug model is essentially suggesting that if through some external hardware you wanted to take control of the cpu then you know what is the circuitry and what is the behavior um, uh, or what is like like how will the cpu behave what is that external circuitry behaving like that's described in the debug model now let me draw a diagram to hammer this point home so we usually think of a system uh, this way or at least you know this has been working for me so you imagine that there is a cpu and the cpu kind of can take in external events as interrupts right so external events that are coming into the CPU are called interrupts. And then internally, there might be cases when something goes wrong, right? The CPU is trying to fetch some data from some memory location. That memory location, let's say the interconnect or the bus system doesn't understand. So, you know, some error happens at the hardware level. So such things are called exceptions, 
right? And the exception model kind of talks about how the interrupts and the exceptions need to be handled, fair? But CPU, external events coming through wires, that's called interrupts. Internal events are called exceptions, all right? Now the CPU will have some mechanism, you know, some lines here, which are called buses. So it might have, you know, some sets of buses here, and I'll draw two, right? Um, so, and this cross on the lines is denoting that these are many lines, right? Wires, essentially, not one single wire. And this is the memory, right? So then the memory model talks about how how are these interactions between the memory and the CPU happening, right? And, okay, and, uh, what, okay, actually this should not be there. This should just be, you know, this way. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, how are the interactions happening with the memory is covered by the memory model, right? And what are these lines now? So this can be an address bus, like what location from the memory are we trying to fetch things from? right and this bus at the bottom here is denoting kind of you know the data that needs to be sent to the memory or the data coming from the memory right that is what the the two di uh, directional uh, bidirectional uh, arrow here is suggesting the bottom one is specifically for uh, you know again address bus but i mentioned that the data will only come towards the cpu here and this bus happens to be something that we call instruction bus, right? So on these two lines here, the CPU is fetching instructions that it needs to execute. And on these two lines, it's fetching the data that it needs to process, right? So that is kind of the memory model. It, the memory model covers how the interactions with memory happen. Now, apart from this, the other thing is the debug model and we haven't come to the programmers model yet because that's what we'll talk about in the next video it it requires like a focus of, of its own a dedicated video but the debug model then is that you know there is this some extra circuitry here but well, typically inside the cpu but i'll show it like outside which has hooks into the cpu's control uh, mechanism and what can happen is you can externally Right. By externally, I mean using some extra piece of external hardware called the hardware debugger. Right. Through, so you have the CPU here and you have this extra circuit here. That circuit can, connects to, let's say, hardware debugger. And this hardware debugger connects to your OS, external machine, Linux, for example. And then here you can do something like GDB. You know, you can try and issue or ask the CPU to execute one instruction at a time. And what that does is that lets you debug what's going on in the uh, program, so to speak, and how is the CPU, uh, you know, executing the code. So the debug model then essentially is something that describes how the CPU will behave once you're trying to debug it using a hardware debugger right so if all of this is clear uh, you know what we'll do is we'll move on to discussing about the programmer's model and just just like uh, you know uh, a suggestion at this point uh, we won't be covering these three models here that we won't be covering as part of this series but know that they are there and all of what i have explained uh, if you forget that or you know don't remember all the details about it uh, don't worry this is also given in the document and um, you know we just want to focus on essentially the programmers model right and so with this let's kind of dive into that